Okay, so it's day three of our painting. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, pick up the painting and put it over on the wall and get an idea of where we are. So just to remind us what we've done so far is we've uh, done the background, we've painted the background, we've put in some our orange, our blues, our background colors, and then we put in the dark of the foreground. Not quite sure if we're gonna have to do more, you know, uh, of any of these layers. And just a reminder, we made sure to put the, make the colors much lighter because we know that they're gonna dry darker. So let's see how we did. We're gonna put this up on the, on the wall, the viewing wall. All right, so here's our painting so far on the viewing wall. And this gives us an idea of how we're doing. Um, we can see that our colors are pretty close, right? We have an idea that the palette that we're looking for is, we're in the range. You know, again, I made sure to keep Keep the colors light so that they, when they darker, we'd be pretty close to where we want to be. Um, so if we look at the colors in the photograph and then we look at the colors in the painting, we can see that we're, um, you know, we're in the ballpark. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to work on this area here. I'm going to fill in what's going to be this field. And then I'm going to add some more oranges. I had I just put in the sun so that I'd have a reference of, of where I wanted to go. Uh, and then I'm going to try to fill in some of these areas here if I if I get that far. So that's what we're going to do right now. All right. Let me take this down. Notice how the painting when I. Um, Put it on the wall notice how it is so easy to lift because i have it on that screening and by having it on the screening um, i can just lift it right up so it works really well to do that so to paint the uh i'm going to start by painting the orange in the sky area this area right here and I made up some orange pulp by taking red and yellow. And this orange to the left of the sun, where the sun is coming up, I think I'm gonna put this right here so we can see it. There we go. The left, the, the orange to the left of the sun is really orange. And then to the right of the sun, we notice it, that it, um, it fades out a little bit. It's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna start with the orange to the left of the sun. And another reminder that I have the, um, you know, the marks here, which are so important to, as my guides, those, those marks. Um, the red, you can see the red and the green. And then as I'm working, you can see the red and the green, um, you know, where I, where I am. So it just helps me to, it's a, it's really an important guide. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this red. It's a little bit redder. I find red, making orange, you have to be very careful how much red you add. It's easy to get the orange to be just too red. It looks like the looks like it's a heat wave in the summer, which it is not in this image at all. So I have to be careful how red I make my orange. All right, so this is a little better. I think I'm gonna 
just kind of get, I think I'm just going to wipe this up. There's just too much red in it. It's not, not the right color. Just again, very tricky to make orange out of red and yellow and not make, not make it be so um, red because red is just such a more dominant color than yellow. So it's all, it always wants to go too close to the red and not enough to the yellow. So I, with the orange, so I always have to work on that. Okay. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to it. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white to my yellow. Right, we're used to seeing me do this now. Get rid of that. And a little bit of orange to that. And that, this should be a nice color to put on the other side of the sun. Yes, you know, that looks really nice. Um, and just much better <laughs> than my first attempt, which was not going well. And then, Adding some orange, get a little orangier. Okay, and then again, a little bit whiter. As we go up, it does get whiter. And then eventually that'll turn blue. And we scrape that out. And even with my finger, kind of blend it in. So that should give me some, um, you know, a little bit more definition there in the begin at the bottom of the sky, which I need um, because once I place the sun down, that's a that's a really good focal point for this painting is that rising sun. So it really helps to have. Uh, the sun in there. And I just put the sun in there briefly before I turned the camera on. So I just put it right where it is in the painting. And notice how when I add the orange increasingly around the sun, it does start to look more and more like that, you know, bright, bright color. Um, almost like a you know the glowing disc, and eventually that's what it will look like as we continue to add the orange around it. You know, it'll just become increasingly, um, increasingly bright. Not by touching it so much, but by the rest of the colors around it getting brighter. So. Gonna, I know I'm going to have to work into this blue area some more, so I'm not going to worry too much about um, 
oopsie daisy, about, you know, getting it exactly right at this point. Because if the sky will always take a little bit of time to, to finish. I'm just going to wipe that down a little bit, though, because I know it's way too bright up there. That's going to be much, much, much lighter. some here. I know this isn't going to quite pan out because I can tell it's um, it's probably a bit too dark, I think. But I'll give it a shot just to give it, just to get some idea of where we're going. <clears throat> Let me put this here. And then right above where the sun is, <clears throat> I'll add some more white. This has actually got a little bit of yellow in it. And then I'll add some white <clears throat> to the bottom of the cloud right over the sun because we can see that that area of the cloud is just a little bit wider. All right. And we'll streak the sun a little bit. Okay, so we'll leave this for now. We'll just see how we're doing. But at least, like I said, we have now we have the sun in that sky, which is helpful because it's such a focal point for the painting. So it gives the painting, it, it, we can start to gauge the rest of the painting around that sun, you know, and the importance of that, of that glowing sun. Um, and everything else can kind of start to shape, get, take shape as long as we have that going. <clears throat> Okay, very good. All right, so I'll leave that alone. <clears throat> and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this area here. So I'm going to use these colors. I've got this green that I made up with mostly cotton that I coagulated. Again, coagulating means that I kept the colors uh, intact. And I made, I have that green. <clears throat> and then I have, I've made up some yellow and orange and lighter green. And I will prepare those and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my colors <clears throat> and I've pulled together like a, chartreuse green 
and the darker green and a, like a brown color and I'm going to paint this area here this time what I'm going to do is to paint it is I'm going to use regular pulp and that by regular pulp I'm referring to cotton abaca mix and I'm actually going to apply it with a turkey baster and you'll notice how I have this cloth in front of it and the cloth is going to uh, collect the extra um, water all right and I'm going to keep adding some what I do is I have the the colors in smaller containers and then I have containers with no pulp in it and I keep adding to that um, more color to wipe away colors as they get in the way as that did I just use a water bottle with water so this color I'm doing this area right here it gets a little darker <clears throat> as it gets <clears throat> fades into the background of the painting there of the composition and so I'm going to keep adding uh, orange and the brown to it so that as it gets further and further away from the sun, it does look as though it's getting, you know, the color is getting a little darker. And then as it gets closer to the sun, it's going to get lighter. So we're going to add more yellow to that area. And maybe a little bit of orange and a little more yellow. And then it's going to do this. and what this will look like when it's dry is kind of you know like a field with hay with with grass because of the texture so I will say the word texture is a word I hear often with my work is people will say I love the texture and this is where I'm getting that texture through the cotton abaca mix. There we go. Now you can see how it's starting to look right here. Let me get, get this down a little better. It's starting to look like the sun is shining on, on the grass. So it's really coming along. And again, if it gets out of control, I take my water. Sometimes what I'll do at this point is I'll put, um, I'll actually elevate the painting a little bit like what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put under here, I have some scrap pieces of gator board and I'm going to just lay it underneath the painting to elevate it. And then what will happen is the, the um, pulp will fall down a little bit better and absorb into my cloth, which is helpful. And once I'm satisfied with this area, I can just move my cloth a little bit so that I keep painting, you know, all the way down. So I'm just going to move the cloth.
and keep going. And then the next um, layer of my field is a uh, pretty dark green. So I'm going to put my green down. The water that's dripping off the painting is going right through the egg crating that we talked about in our first session. You can hear it a little bit falling through the table. Okay. At this point, I'm going to just take this cloth and squeeze, oops, <laughs> squeeze it out. And see how it's getting on the rocks, but the rocks, the rocky area, the rocky knoll, area right in here is getting wet but it's fine it just it just rinses right off i will say this though don't push it hard like just so you know gently you can get rid of the water or just let it dry your best bet is probably to just ignore it and let it dry it won't ruin the colors if you really push you know um try to get the water up now on it you you may start losing some color so i would just try to ignore it and we'll keep working on this area right in here we can see how it has like these stripes so we're going to put my cloth back up here This is mostly what I'm, this kind of grayish color here, this color is mostly overbeaten abaca and it's, it's going to flow really nicely. It's just going to make the pulp come out a little bit more smoothly, you know, because they're of the goopy, so it'll make it a little goopier. Gonna get that off of there. 
and Okay. Color I'm using here is this color. I just don't want to put it on the um, the artwork itself at this time, and I don't want to put it on the rock, so I'm leaving it at the at the edge of the paper. And let's get this darker. See? I can hold this color. Okay. And now I will lift this up and we have our field. Voila! We'll have to work on it some more, but we've got a good start to our field. All right, and I'm going to make up some more colors and I'll be right back. All right, so we've pretty much finished the uh, the field, and I'm going to do likewise to the foreground. I'm going to add to this area here. I'm going to add some orange and some russet color, and I'm going to mix them in this cup right here. So it looks like that. A little more water. I'll add some water.
Okay, go like that. I'm going to work some of the orangey yellow color into the foreground. And here's where you really want that orangey yellow color because that's where the sun is just starting to glow on it. So it's important to have that. And get the water to chase it off these rocks. So you just chase it right off. And again, I wouldn't try try not to touch the rocks too much because you will eventually start picking up the color. But you don't want that to happen. So All right, and we'll put this here. And it, what's happening is that the underneath this is, is the overbeaten abaca with the torora with that formation aid. When that gets wet again, it does, um, it does get goopy again. And that actually works out because what, can, what happens is it acts like a glue so that when the pulp, the new pulp comes down on it, it it will adhere to it. It, it the, when the goopy got dries, it will have, um, you know, it will have acted like a glue and hold on this newer layer of pulp. So that really works well for us to have that happen. So until this dries, we'll have to just leave it alone for now. And at this point, again, we have our sun. So let's um, I'm gonna take some orange and yellow and work back into that sun that's had a little bit of chance to dry since we've been working on the other areas. We'll see if there's any more area we can work on in there. Some more yellow. And some more orange. See, a nice color. I'm going to paint this orange here. All right. So we're going to paint the orange sun. And then we're going to do this.
and we're gonna add a little bit more to this area of the field. See, so that we have this whole piece. I'll just sort of pick it up the best I can. It's really wet, obviously. <clears throat> okay. Now what we need to do is we're gonna to try to fill in some of this area here. Um, I'm gonna use overbeaten for this because it is in the distance. So we don't need as much texture. And I'm gonna start with some purple. Purple. And I'm gonna add some russet color to cool it off. And then I'm actually going to add some pulp that doesn't have any color in it. It's just the pulp out of the beater. Um, because I can tell this color is going to be a little bit too heavy. And I want it to be lighter, like it's fading into the background a little bit. So for this first layer that I'm putting down, I, I'm, again, kind of like with my son, I'm just trying to figure out, um, you know, get some idea of what the color is. It's a little hard to tell what the color is right now because it is such a um, unique color. You know, is it purple? Is it green, a sage color? It's a little tough to read. So I'm going to go with what I think it is and go a little bit lighter with it. I'm going to fade it out as we go down here. And, you know, see how we do. All right, um, get this russet color out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna add, I had to shut the camera off for a minute. I ran out of film. <laughs> <laughs> 